guys, welcome back to part two of my weekly vlog. In my last video, which I will link to in the description box below, as well as up here in the video, um, I mentioned that we had a very busy week this past week and we did a lot of different things and it made my vlog really long. So I broke it up into two parts. If you missed the first one, you can definitely check out the link below or you can just watch the previous video on my YouTube channel. Um, the clips that you are about to see are part two. It's just basically all the other things that we got up to this week around the house, um, checking fish traps. We started a new spring garden bed, just doing like the beginning stages of getting that garden bed prepped. And um, we did some cleaning up around our property, just some outdoor kind of spring cleaning things on really nice days. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this part two of our week. And um, if you do, give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, I would love it if you subscribe to my channel. And if you have any questions or comments about anything you see in the video, definitely leave me a comment below and I will get back to you. All right, so I will see you guys a little later on. Bye. So Papa brought over a fish trap um, to catch little tiny fish. They're called horny heads here. They have little horns on top of their head. And they're kind of like a sucker fish, but they're really yummy, he says. Um, so the boys are out tying it up right now. And Charlie's chewing on a briar. And really annoyed that he can't go down there. But he'll be a big wet mess if I let him go. So. Can I go in? Because I already got my shoes wet. Um, what does Dad say? I need to sit up here. Um, that's okay with me as long as those, yeah, those are your play shoes. Sure. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Charlie's dragging me down the hill here. Charlie! 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 Are you mad at Mama? Because she won't let you go. You're gonna choke yourself there, dog. Did you get it? Oh, I see. So I don't know if you guys can see, there's a, like a light brown rope tied to the tree where the boys are. And then the trap is like down in the water. If you follow that little line, you can see it is black way down there. Charlie's tied me up. He's just so funny. You're so funny. What are you doing? He's trying to get that off of you, aren't you? Come on, bud. Come on. These kids are crazy. They're like so excited about getting in the creek when the weather warms up, but they're like begging me every single day if they can go get in the creek. And it's freezing cold. So Dean said that the creek may be too high to have any fish, but... Wow, got a bunch of leaves. Let's go. Oh, he did get some. I can't see. I can't see. Oh, that is actually a fish. Let me see it. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're so tiny. Are they horny heads? Yeah. Huh. So my dad said that horny heads are sort of like salmon. They come up the creek to lay their eggs and then they go back down. When they start actually moving, okay, a whole bunch of but... Isaiah, come show me. He does have sharp horns on his head. Oh, I do see them, like little bitty bumps. Don't let oh. him go. Whoa, hold still, hold still. Yeah, so you can see the little horns on his head. And he's like a sucker fish, kind of? Yeah, see, her mouth is on oh, the bottom of them. Oh, sorry, I'm not. You're in the light, so let me see. Oh yeah, I see. 
Be gentle, please. All right, go put him back in so you can breathe. And Daddy's cleaning the track out. Is the water cold on your legs? Yeah. Yeah? And I just remembered I forgot to put my pants up. That's okay. That's okay. Oh. I go down. No, let's come on out right here. Okay. So, it's Friday around 9 in the morning and I just wanted to show you guys all of the birds outside of my window in my bedroom. I sit here on this window seat and I do a lot of my work and um, this was a bird feeder that was here at this house when a bird feeder, it's, it's where bird feeders are hung or bird houses, but it was here and it was, um, it had fallen and broken out of the ground. So there they go. They all ran off. It's funny or flew off. Um, anyway, we put it back up last year, but the concrete was too wet and it didn't set properly. So that's what the posts or the little supports are against the post to help hold it up. So we actually had to dig it back out of the ground this year and re-concrete it in correctly. Oh, look at the little cardinal on the tree. I don't know if you guys can see him. He's right there on the tree. And his little wifey is around somewhere. She's brown with a little bit of reddish orange on her. Anyway, so I put this bird feeder right there's the bird feeder and this is a birdhouse my dad made me for Mother's Day a couple of years ago. Anyway, we put these out here and the birds love it. So they'll sit on the feeder and eat the seed and then it falls on the ground. And so sometimes there are like 10 or 15 birds out here. Sparrows, chickadees, cardinals. I haven't seen any robins yet. I don't know if you guys can see. Oh, yep, there it went. I don't know where that, what that one is. That one may be a chickadee. He's eating now, but it's kind of dark so you can't see that. But they have a little black cap on their head and a little black throat. Anyway, there are a bunch of them everywhere down here. And so the boys and I love sitting out here and watching them eat. Hey guys, it's Friday morning around 9.30. Um, the boys are off doing their schoolwork. So if you hear the piano going or people chattering outside, that's what they're doing. They're actually finishing up their chores from this morning and then getting started on schoolwork. So while they're doing that, I thought I would jump on here really quickly and um, share some things that I got from Amazon today and um, tell you a little bit about those. And I'm not sure, I can't remember if I shared with you already my new like product kind of thing for growing a herbal. Um, I'm not sure if I shared this with you guys earlier this week or not, but if I did, I'll tell you about it again. And if I didn't, I'm gonna tell you about it now because some of the stuff that I got has to do with that thing. Um, and then, whoa, the lighting got really weird for a second. <laughs> um, and then I am gonna take you guys outside and show you our front garden bed. That is one of the gardens, uh, garden areas around our house that I wanted to focus on this year. And last night, Dean and I got out and, and Judah, he helped, and we moved all of the landscaping rocks out of there. There were some like burning bushes that have been in there. Actually, there are a lot of burning bushes on this property. Um, that have been here for years and there was like just a huge root ball so it kind of tore up the, the frame of the bed so we'll have to fix that but um, we got all of that stuff out there was a huge poke root like the poke plants that have the purple berries on them um, there was a huge one in that front bed where it was just all overgrown and you know not kept up with like a lot of the garden and landscaping things around this place um, when we moved in. And so we just hadn't done anything with that bed last year, but this year is the year to get it all landscaped along the front of the house. Um, and then I have another little bed on the left side of our walkway that I'm gonna get landscaped. We're gonna tear out. There's a bunch of like at risk sort of herbs in that bed and I need to move those somewhere else. And I'm gonna make that bed like a rock garden. And maybe some of those plants I can kind of leave in that bed. I'm not sure yet, I haven't really designed 
that bed or laid it out on paper what I want to do with it but I have the front bed so that's what we worked on yesterday I needed all that stuff pulled out because we're getting to the point in the season where I can go to the nurseries and I can pick out things and go ahead and start planting them. My hostas are kind of starting to come up and there are some really huge overgrown hostas in that front bed. I need to dig those out. I need to like divide the hostas. I probably, probably could divide one hosta into eight pieces and then move that stuff out because they are so huge. So anyway, I'm gonna show you guys what we did last night um, here in just a second. But first, let me share some stuff that I got with you from Amazon. So, can you guys see this? The light from my window was probably making it weird. This is like um, for clothes. It's a fuzz lint and pilling, piling, piles, pill, blah, 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 I don't know. Lint fuzz. I just call it lint on my, on your sweaters and um, coats or whatever. Um, so I had one of these before. My mom actually had one growing up and I always used it. And she bought me one when Dean and I got married and it lasted for years and years and years. And then I lost it somehow. I don't know if I left it somewhere, I don't know. Anyway, so I bought another one off Amazon um, and it kept sucking the juice out of the batteries and then eventually just quit working, like wouldn't turn on or anything. Um, so this time when I have some sweaters that are like in serious need of this and so I went online to buy another one and I found this one, I've already opened it and used it. But this one is actually, um, a rechargeable one which I love because then I don't have to use the batteries so it came fully charged and yes yeah, really loud and I only I already did one sweater just a little bit of a sweater anyway it does a really good job um the last one that I got I'll say it ate some of my sweaters like as you rub it on your sweater it would like suck the sweater up inside of there and messed up a couple of my sweaters this one has not done that I used it on one already just to see if it worked well um and so it it didn't want to, it didn't have a tendency to like wanna pull the sweater material into it. Um, you just plug it up and let it recharge and I love that so you can use it cordless or you could use it plugged up while it's charging if it's dead. But I would go through so many batteries with my other one so I'm really glad to have a rechargeable one this time around. Um, and like I said, I already tested it. It seems like it's working really well so far. Can take it all apart and clean it and there are different size settings. I don't know if you guys can see right here. I don't know if the lighting is weird but you can, increase this or decrease it depending on how fuzzy your sweater is. Sorry for the weird light. I don't know why it's shifting and changing, but it, every time I look away and then I look at the camera, it's like, oh, I'm like glowing. Okay, so my newest, my newest hustle <laughs> with Growing Up Herbal. Um, growing Up Herbal started as a way for me to market my handmade herbal skincare products that I used on my boys when they were little. And I had an Etsy shop and I sold my products on there. I had all these different little product lines. It was a fun, fun, creative thing for me to do. And so I started the blog as a way to share behind the scenes stuff. Well, eventually we moved from this area by my in-laws and we moved to our house on the mountain. So I closed down making all the things with Growing Up Herbal and I was pregnant with Ezra, my fourth, and I just knew that I was at this point where I needed to shift out of a product-based business and just do like an online digital content creation kind of business. And I wanted to do more education also because I was learning more about herbs and I really wanted to go more into like teacher mode with that. So I didn't do any of the product stuff when during the whole six years that we lived up on the mountain. I only taught herbs and then I, that's how I got into being a blog coordinator for first the bulk herb store and then for the Herbal Academy and then the Herbal Academy shifted from only blog coordination to um, like a marketing assistant, kind of more, um, I did course development kinds of stuff like helping out with those sort of things. We, we did a lot of things at the Herbal Academy. It was a lot of fun. Um, so anyway, it's like the last six years, I have not done products, I've done more teaching. And so after I got the job with the Herbal Academy, it was like a real part-time job. I kind of let my blog slide and I, it, not slide in a way like I didn't do anything with it, but instead of being, um, doing so much teaching there, I was teaching, doing more teaching at the Herbal Academy. So my blog became more of, less of an educational blog and more of a lifestyle blog, which I really like. So I just share things that we're doing, how I use herbs, um, what's going on in our lives, kind of like my little YouTube vlogs. Um, okay, so two things really quickly. First, my phone cut me off because I have too much junk on my phone and I need to move some of it to my computer. Secondly, 
after like five more attempts at re-recording this and being interrupted by one of four children, I'm back. <laughs> Welcome to my life. Um, okay, so all of that stuff that I was saying about how growing a burble has progressed. We are here at 2021 and in 2020 I had a lot of time to think about where I wanted to take my business because I stopped working for the Herbal Academy because like I was saying before I was interrupted a ton, um, life is busy for me here at home. Lots of homeschooling stuff going on, new property, lots of projects. So I don't have time to work a bunch. And I feel very blessed that um, our family is in the position that it's in where I don't have to work if I don't want to. So with all of that said, my plan is to continue with growing a verbal, my vlogging, um, Instagram, just sharing my lifestyle and how I do things and what I think about things and whatever. And so if people connect with me and they wanna learn more and they wanna watch and see what's going on, that's great. So these are places that you can keep up with me in that way. But I love teaching people, like everyday people, how to use herbs without it being like this overwhelming, um, this overwhelming thing where they think they have to do like years and years and years worth of school. Like you can do that if you want. And I highly recommend that. But in the beginning or even in the midst of school, like there are little things that you can be doing and incorporating herbs into your life every single day. Um, in a really fun and enjoyable way, not getting bogged down by all of the studies that you have to do and not, um, I guess one of the things I experienced is like when I was really focusing on um, my studies, I feel like that was, I was overwhelmed by it. I was burnt out on it. That's all I was doing. And I, I kind of lost the passion and the excitement of, of using herbs every single day on a daily basis. Um, so anyway, 2020, and some separation from, well, I was going to herbal school then, but it, anyway, I don't know. I just kind of felt like I had some separation from looking at herbalism as a job versus this is just how I live my life. This is what we do. I like learning about herbs. I like using herbs. I love teaching other people how to do that exact same thing. So all of that to say, I have started a Patreon page and it is going to become the place where I share how to embrace seasonal herbalism, how to incorporate herbs into your life on a seasonal basis. So it's not like overwhelming you, like I've got all of these things I have to learn, all these things I have to do. No, 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 no. We're gonna take it one season at a time. We're gonna talk about, like right now, we're talking about spring herbs. We're talking about spring recipes that you may be making. There's a good bit of lifestyle component in there. We have a book club that goes on every month and it's not like you're reading a new book every single month. We're picking one book and we're reading like sections of it. So it's really doable for most people's busy lifestyles. I'm busy, I'm homeschooling. Again, I have lots of stuff going on in the home and outside the home. I can't have things just be the thing that encompasses my whole life because I have lots of other things going on and you may be that way too. So if you're interested in herbalism and wanting to kind of maybe dip your toe in the water or maybe you already know a bit about herbs but you feel like you need to be more organized and more strategic with how you use herbs, um, maybe, you really wanna connect with more of the art or the folksy side of herbalism, this is for you. So my seasonal herbalism community on Patreon, that's the goal. Um, it's brand new, brand new. So I have a lot of big plans. I have um, almost the entire year mapped out. We are getting started. There are some people already in there and I'm excited to share with them. So one of the things that I ordered, and this is, this is what's going on right now. When you sign up for my seasonal herbalism community over on Patreon. I have bought these super cute thank you cards. I don't know if you guys can see them with a the light. And um, pretty little thank you stamps. And some, actually let me open this and show you. This is a wax seal. My kids love using wax seals on their letters. And so I thought I want to do that too. So I bought this pretty um, green gold sealing wax. I don't know if you guys can see that. It matches the letters, the little note cards pretty well. And can you guys see this on here? A little, it's like a little plant stamp. And so I will be handwriting everybody who joins in the next, it's about two weeks. So from the beginning of March till about March 14th or 15th, everyone who joins 
my seasonal herbalism community over on Patreon will get a handwritten card from me and a little seasonal gift that is perfect for spring. Um, and then I'll seal it with my little, my little herbal stamp here. Um, and so what I'm really looking for is just a way to connect in a, in a more meaningful, deeper way than I can do on the blog or through YouTube or through Instagram because that's like to the masses, just people who are interested in seeing your lifestyle and learning a little bit about what you do. But the Patreon community is really for those people who want to almost like be mentored by me and see how I live this seasonal herbal lifestyle and they want that for themselves too. So they're really learning. I will be there saying like, okay, here's what we're focusing on this month. These are the things that we're gonna be looking for this month and I'm there to teach. There'll be a lot of videos. There's Q and A videos. There's gonna be herb walks. Um, there are different membership levels that you can get into. So you can choose your level and you can get in and get the amount that you need and what works for you. And at the highest level, um, they're actually all seasonal names. So it's spring, summer, autumn, and winter. So at the winter level, I'm actually making you a little seasonal herbal goodie box. It's a surprise box and it will be physically mailed to you and you will get like decent sized products, not little tiny products, like decent sized products that I have made, things that I'm using in the season. Um, the first one goes out at the end of next week and just in time for the spring equinox. Um, and so you'll have some time to use that. New members who sign up will be able, if they sign up at the winter level, they'll be able to get the summer solstice box that'll be coming mid-June. So anyway, that's my new announcement. I will be still doing all my lifestyle stuff, but as far as herbal teaching goes, I'm really gonna hone in and focus on the seasonal herbalism community over on Patreon, all of my time, focus, and effort, and herbal energy will be going to that spot. So if that's something you're interested and you like what you see on my site, you like what you see here on Instagram that I've shared with herbalism or um, here on YouTube and over on Instagram, then I want to personally invite you to come join me over there. I think you guys will love it. Um, okay, so I've shared all my little goodies that I've bought and I'm gonna take you guys out front and show you the garden beds because I'm really excited about getting that fixed and finished and project checked off of my home to-do list. <laughs> okay, so this is the front garden bed. I don't know how well you can see it or not. It's kind of an extension of this area, this front garden area, which will start blooming. It's got bulbs coming up right now, but it'll start blooming. The um, hostas and the ferns will all start popping up and it'll look a little bit more alive soon but anyway this front bed is an extension of this other little garden area but we did not do anything with it last year so you can see we've pulled out all the rocks through here and we have trash can we've been cleaning up all the trash pulling out all this dead stuff that's been growing through here you can see the holes where Dean dug out big roots of things the other day um, this is a huge hosta I was telling you guys about it starts like all the way over there and it circles all the way up into there. So we have to dig this huge clump out and then just start chunking it and dividing it up. And then here's another one right beside of it. Right there, you can see. This is what it looks like, hostas look like in early spring. So they'll start getting like little nodules on them. Like the new growth will start coming in. Actually, I feel like one of these, you can already see it, but I'm not sure where that was at. Um, anyway, so those have to be dug out and there's actually another one down here somewhere. This drainage pipe has to be put underground. I don't know why that one's out because the other two, I don't think you can see, it's underground there and then there's one all the way at the end that's buried under the ground. I don't know why that one is not. Maybe there was something that happened and they had to dig it up and they never put it back under there. I don't know. Um, so I've got all of this stuff that's growing across the front of the wall. It's like a cousin to Virginia creeper. I can't remember what it's called. I have it on my little plant app. But anyway, it's it's pretty. It's green in the summer and it goes sort of like an orangey red in the fall. But unfortunately, some of it has been damaged in our work over here. So I may have to dig it out. Replant it. I'm not sure. Here's a little grass. I have to decide if I'm keeping. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like one little grass. I don't know if that's like an ornamental grass or what it is, but that has to come out maybe over here is where we dug this huge root ball for a burning bush out and it tore up all of the 
railroad ties, but these railroad ties um, are very old. I would say this whole thing has been here. The ho our house was built in 1998, so it's probably been here that whole time. So a lot of them are rotten. We have some others we're going to bring in and cut and fix this area because I don't want to redo the whole front of the bed, and I like the moss growing on them and stuff like that because I like old stuff. So anyway, this is the beginning of our bed. Lots of dirt. They covered all of the gravel. All of the beds were covered in gravel. And I like mulch on my beds because I like to keep the soil really healthy. So we will be digging this all up, adding plants all across the front here, and then covering it in mulch so that it matches this bed over here. Hi, Rosie. Hi, girl. Are you resting? Oh, Rose. Should we call her our bear? She's always resting. <laughs> That's what old girls do, right, Rose? They rest. Um, anyway, so my plan, this is a tentative plan, it's not set in stone yet, there are no plants in, is to have like evergreens spaced out all across the front, and then the hostas will be in sections in between the evergreens, and then there will be the rocks. I'll bring back some of these decorative rocks, and we've piled a bunch of them up in front of our car, I don't know if you can see that, but we'll put the rocks in, and then we'll plant some things around the rocks. Um, basically have a good bit of space in between everything when it first gets planted because it'll all be small and it'll have to grow in and fill in um, but everything should fill in pretty well I don't want anything coming over the top of the wall there where the porch is so I've got to pick some evergreens that'll stay kind of small because some of them get really big but anyway this is the beginning of the project hopefully by the end of spring this will be completely done covered in mulch and I will be fertilizing everything in here once a month and it will really get established well. I actually think I need to move these lavender plants too. I don't think they're getting enough sun over here because they're not as big as the ones right over there. <sighs> anyway, it's that time of the year to get to gardening so here we are. Hey guys, so it's Saturday and the boys and I and Dean, we're all headed to the farmer's market to look around, do some shopping. They're having a fun little event today um, where they're doing like a seed exchange. So anyone who has extra vegetable or flower seeds, um, they're just available for free for people who wanna come pick up um, somebody else's extras, um, swapping, exchanging, whatever uh, you need to do. And the kids are making like flower seed paper. So like where you can plant the paper in the ground and it decomposes and your flowers can grow out of it. So they're doing that. So it's a fun little seed exchange kind of thing today. Um, and then after that, we are heading in further into town to, sorry for the weird lighting, the sun is shining right through my window. Um, we're heading further into town to uh, our local nursery and we're going to hopefully, fingers crossed, buy some plants to go in our front garden bed that I showed you guys the other day. We just got home from the farmer's market and the nursery and I'm waiting on Dean to get back with all of my plants from the nursery. I only was able to get, hi Charlie, I was only able to get three conifers and two hydrangeas. They're a particular type of hydrangea that I have in our front garden and they're okay to plant right now. Um, 
because they don't get any buds till later on, so they're okay. So I'm waiting on him to bring those home, and then we're going to dig holes and get those put in. Um, and then soon we'll be getting some mulch to cover that back area up in the bed. And I'll show you guys as we do that. But I wanted to show you some things that I got at the farmer's market. So the first thing that I got was this cool little wind chime. I love wind chimes and I love putting them around the house. I have one on the back patio, but I don't have anything on the front porch. So this one's made of beads and like metal washers and little things. I don't really know what all these are. But anyway, I thought it was really pretty. It was just a piece of wood. You guys can see the top, how they did that. Um, so the family who was set up selling this um, is her, their daughter and their son goes to our like youth group kind of thing at our church. And so that was fun that we got to see them. They're selling stuff at the farmer's market today and I got to buy some things from them. And I also bought, this is like a grapevine wreath. I have several of these around the house and this has fabric roses on it. And I thought this was really cute for spring. I don't have anything for my front door for spring. And so I saw this and I was like, I have a bunch of these, like I said, I have a bunch of these little grapevine reeds and so it would match other reeds in my house. I don't know what the dog, the dog's barking at the cat probably. <laughs> anyway, so I'm gonna put this on my front door. Um, yeah, and I think that'll look really nice. Springy and handmade and cottagey. So it's all good. Anyway, I'll show you guys the plants that I got, the different, the types of conifers and the hydrangeas when Dean gets back with them in just a second. Okay, so here is one of the evergreens that we bought. Um, it's called a Tom Thumb Arbivorte. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. And it ends up looking like a big ball, <laughs> a big evergreen ball. It gets around um, two to three feet tall and two to three feet wide. So we are placing it in between this post and that post over there. And then we'll have a hydrangea. This is called a Bobo hydrangea. It starts out with like a lime color. Then it fades to a really pretty white and then it gets uh, light pink and then darker pink in the winter or towards fall. And we actually have two of them over there. So I wanted to pull those two things into this front bed. Um, and then we'll have another one of the evergreens. And then right here where this pipe is sticking out, we're gonna remove the black pipe and we're gonna take some of that white gravel and it'll line the very, very front of this bed. And then right here, it'll like go up towards this pipe, kind of like a, almost like a dry little bed, but the, the downspout will pour down into the gravel and hopefully kind of split our bed into two sides. So we'll have the evergreen, the hydrangea, and the evergreen. And then on this side, it'll be the same thing. Evergreen, hydrangea, and I have to buy one more evergreen for down there. So that'll be the back. And um, let's see, I think I showed you guys this the other day, but here is a huge, um, all over the place here. This is a hosta, like a really big one. And there are a couple of others down through here where they were planted and they're really big. So in a month or so, we'll dig those out. Or actually, I guess we could do it now. We will dig them out, divide them up, and the hostas will be planted in between each of these. So they'll kind of be like scattered through here in a big area, kind of to the front of the bed and the back, maybe like in a triangle sort of shape. So in between each of these big plants, there'll be hostas growing all the way down through there. And once those things are in, we will mulch the whole front of the bed to keep the hostas protected from any late frosts. And these plants right here are pretty hardy, so they're actually okay the way they are. And when we get that done, we can place our landscaping rocks back in. Um, they will probably be like, so say if the hostas are in between the two big plants, the landscaping rocks will be like sort of to the sides maybe, like spaced out through here. And then when we don't have any fear of frost, then I will plant some like pink colored um, foxgloves. We will pull some phlox into the front bed. I have flocks up here in this bed. So we'll pull some pinks and purples and white flocks and it'll spread kind of like a ground cover across the front. Um, we'll pull some corabels into this bed, like purple corabels, cause I have purple corabels up there. So that front bed is like a lot of different shades of pinks, purples, greens, and whites. And I really like um, those soft colors, especially cause we're kind of going for a cottage garden style. Um, so the soft colors look really good. And I want that bed to kind of flow into this bed um, in a little bit of like, I guess in a few ways. Now, the only thing down here that we haven't figured out yet 
is once we get the edge of our bed fixed where we pull that huge burning bush out, this area, as you can see, gets full sun. And so um, we'll have one more conifer right here between these two posts. And then I wanna have some sort of bigger, sort of tree-ish thing right here. I'm just not sure what that looks like yet. I don't know if we'll do um, like the purple, it's like a dark purple colored um, Japanese maple. Dean really likes how those look and you can get the miniature versions and they tend to look really good on the ends. I think of houses are like at corners and that's right what we have or that's what we have right here. Um, we could also do another conifer, just a different style of conifer, but we want something different right here on the end to kind of put an end that's tall, like kind of taller, a taller plant right there to kind of bring this garden to a stopping point right there, this front bed. So anyway, that's my plan at the moment. Um, and then, yeah, I'm trying to save all of the little vines. I can't remember what those are called. Um, it's like a cousin to the Virginia creeper, but this is a smaller version and it doesn't grow as quickly. But this is so pretty. It covers the wall with these pretty green leaves in the summer and then they turn orange and red in, I guess more red than orange in the, um, in the fall. And it looks really nice, especially because we'll have a lot of green here in the fall. A lot of the flowers will have stopped blooming and so um, the hostas, are not hostas, the um, hydrangeas are kind of like a really deep rusty pink and then this will be kind of like a red. I don't know how that'll look together but if it looks bad I can always pull the vines out if I don't like it. But anyway, so this is it for now. We have to move the hostas, we have to get rock and we have to get mulch and then we can kind of plant everything and get everything moved and then we'll just wait, like I said, until probably around May to get the rest of the plants in. So yeah. Now we are going to go all around the yard and pick up sticks and brush from trees and cut things and we've got a pile right here. We're gonna burn stuff, <laughs> clean up the yard and really kind of get some stuff straightened out out here since it's a nice day today. What have you been doing? Chopping down little mini trees sprouting up? More like Judah, little, you've little been, mini people. <laughs> yeah, you've been burning brush. Everything. Mm-hmm, okay, so we've trimmed the lower branches of these trees here. And we are raking and piling all the brush in the wheelbarrow, mm -hmm. dumping it in the little fire, cleaning up the creek bank here. This little stream dumps into the big creek. Little bros are playing. They're helping some too. Dean's cutting down all of the big stuff, cleaning up the bottoms of the trees, just so we can kind of keep this area um, mowed and less overgrown this year. We cleaned it up last year, just like we're doing now, but we didn't mow in this area. And so um, this year we want to try to, it, it grew up, I guess last year, since we didn't mow in it, it grew up really um, and it kind of filled the whole place back in. So this year we're cleaning it up and we're going to try to keep it mowed and really nice right through here. So we'll see. All right, so that's it for part two of this week's vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it. And again, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them in the comments below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the week and I will catch you in next week's vlog. Bye.